Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a look at one of the most popular methods of investment appraisal. Uh, we're going to look at the payback period. Don't forget that investment appraisal is all about analysing whether an investment project is worthwhile from a financial point of view. And there are a variety of different methods of uh, appraising potential investments. This one, which we're going to look at in this video, is called the payback period which looks at the time it takes for the project to repay in cash terms the initial investment. We'll also look in subsequent videos at a concept called the ARR, the average, or sometimes known as the accounting rate of return, which looks at the overall accounting profits from the project to see whether the percentage return is acceptable. And thirdly, and again the subject of a separate video, uh, a concept called net present value or discounted cash flows which tries to take account of the time value of money in assessing the value of net cash inflows and outflows from a project. But for this video, we're going to take a look and focus on the payback period. And it's important to remember that the payback period generates a result that is slightly different from the other two main methods of investment appraisal. The payback period is expressed in terms of time. For example, years, days. How long does it take? for the initial investment to be repaid. Whereas the average rate of return gives you a percentage return rather than a, a measure me uh, recorded in time. And similarly, the discounted cash flow method actually gives you a monetary value in pound note terms, and it's either positive or negative. So you can see from investment appraisal that the, the outputs or the results of each, each technique are a little bit different. So a payback period, therefore, is all about the time it takes to get your investment back. There it is. That's what it says on the screen. The payback period is the time it takes for a, a project, an investment project, to repay its initial investment. So how do we do this? How do we calculate payback? Well, what we have to have are the net cash flows for each period. And typically, you'll get these uh, on an annual basis, particularly in exams. What I mean by net cash flows is the cash flows in, the cash flows out, because it will be those that we are using uh, to determine at what stage the payback period has been achieved. Now, the way to do this is to keep a running total. So obviously your initial investment is going to be a cash outflow. And we're trying to find out when does your initial investment get paid back? So at what stage does the total net cash flow, the cumulative cash flow mean that it moves positive and therefore the initial investment has been repaid. And that's what we're going to have a look at with a simple example. Uh, let's take an example. Here we go. This is, I didn't know whether you've seen one of these before, but this is a chocolate molding machine. And in our example, a manufacturer of chocolates is planning to invest, is planning to uh, install a half a million pound new state-of-the-art chocolate molding machine. Uh, with the aim of increasing the capacity of the business, enabling it to produce more chocolates, generate extra revenues and profits, hopefully some positive cash flows for making the initial investment in that beautiful chocolate moulding machine. Now, here in the table, we have some numbers and let's see how we can calculate at what stage payback is achieved. Obviously, as we've mentioned, the initial investment is always an outflow. And in this case, at uh, year zero, in other words, now, the cash outflow is half a million pounds and therefore the total at time zero, year zero, is half a million pounds negative. Have we reached payback? Well, clearly not because there's been no inflows yet on this project. So what we have to do is we have to keep a running total to see where we're at with the, the cash flows. Year one, we get £100,000 in. Our cumulative total is therefore minus £400,000. And again, we've not yet reached payback. Year two, we get slightly more in from this machine, £150,000 worth of net flows, net cash coming in. Therefore, our running total is still minus. It's 250, negative 250,000. Therefore, we have still not yet reached payback. What happens in year three? Well, it looks like the inflows are getting bigger, but they're not quite enough yet to repay the initial investment. So an inflow in year three of £175,000 means that our cumulative or running total has fallen. But it's now only minus £75,000. We're almost at payback, but not quite. So it looks like 
payback occurs at some stage in year four because as we can see from year four a net inflow during the during the year of 150,000 pounds means that by the end of year four we have a positive running total a positive cumulative cash flow of 75,000 so somewhere between the end of year three and the end of year four payback was finally achieved and I suppose the question is when did it happen well there's a bit of maths just to to, to follow up on so you can calculate the precise payback period now we know it's three years because we haven't reached uh, payback by the end of year three and we know it's some way during year four and the way to calculate this is to simply divide the required cash to reach payback in this case it was another seventy five thousand pounds by the total cash flow in during that period in this case a year which was one hundred and fifty thousand pounds and add it to the year total uh, which was three and if you do that you'll see that payback arises after three and a half years that's how you calculate the the extra little bit of the year in which payback occurred three and a half years to get our half a million pound investment back now hopefully you can see from the payback period calculation that one of the big benefits of using it is that it's firstly really quite simple it's pretty easy to calculate and i think we can all understand that payback is when you get your cash back that you shelled out at the start of the project and the fact that it focuses on cash flows is another benefit and another benefit or advantage of using payback is that it focuses very much on the speed of return and that's particularly useful for where a project might be in quite a complex market or there might be a lot of risk associated with it and what you really want to know is when do i get my cash back in other words when where can i start to expect to earn profits or positive cash flows from this project once I've recouped my initial investment. Another benefit of payback is that it's actually quite easy to compare alternative projects. You might have three or four investment projects and you can very easily see which of those projects has the shortest payback in cash terms. However, as with all methods of investment appraisal, whilst there are some benefits, there are also some possible drawbacks, some disadvantages of, of using them or relying on them. I think perhaps most importantly the payback period completely ignores what happens after payback has been achieved so what happens if that uh, chocolate molding machine keeps on making two hundred thousand pounds net cash flow extra for the next 20 years um, great news but it's irrelevant to the payback calculation because we'd already calculated that at three and a half years and what happens after three and a half years is irrelevant to payback and of course the other thing is that it potentially encourages you to accept projects or to focus on projects that have the quickest payback period rather than maybe the highest overall return um, of course it takes no account of the fact that you'd rather have cash now than coming in in five or six years time it doesn't take account of what's known as the time value of money and as we'll see with the discounted cash flow that's one of the main benefits of using discounted cash flow it tries to take account of the fact that money in the future isn't worth quite as much to you now and of course the payback period doesn't actually give you a decision it simply gives you a number in terms of time and what you have to do as a management team is to decide whether that payback period is acceptable in order to help make the decision so quick recap payback period perhaps the simplest of the three main methods of investment appraisal it's all about the time it takes to get your cash back from the initial investment so the key to calculating it is to remember that table where you had the running total of cumulative cash flows because that will give you the answer that will tell you it will spot the point in time at which the payback has been achieved hopefully that's been useful this has been a short but hopefully useful business topic video on the payback period